All right. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a really nice weekend. Um, we're looking at pages 190 and 191 in the packet. Um, if you're in my class, we went through a lot of these two pages together. So feel free to fast forward to whatever um, you need to look at. Um, what you're going to be working on after you watch this video is the following two pages, a bunch of factoring practice, uh, which is pages 192 and 193 in your notes packet. Okay, It's called the uh, 72 to 76 factoring re review. Okay? It looks like this. That's the first of the two pages. So that's what you're going to be working on. Okay, But I'm going to go through all of pages um, 190 and 191 with you in case there's anything that you didn't understand, or I'm gonna even go through all the examples um, on 192 that we didn't get to, okay? So given the P of X, and I'm gonna to try to go through this fairly quickly, um, some polynomial equals all this. First, they're telling us to find P of five. So P of five, we're gonna plug in five everywhere we see an X. 5 cubed minus 9 times 5 squared plus 23 times 5 minus um, 15. So that's 125. That's going to be 9 times 25, so minus 225. And then plus 23 times 5, that's 115 minus 15. Okay, so if you add these two together, you get negative 100. Adding these two together, you get plus 100. So you do, in fact, get 0. Okay. Uh, so now what we're going to do, and I want you to notice this. We just did P of 5, and we got 0. Now we're going to take x cubed minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 15, the polynomial we were just talking about. We're going to divide by x minus 5 using polynomial long division. So x cubed minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 15 divide by x minus 5, so x goes into x cubed, x squared times, x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times minus 5, minus 5 x squared. We're going to subtract, so when you subtract this, you're subtracting a negative, so you're adding a positive, we get negative 4 x squared, we bring down plus 23 x minus 15, so we look at x, x goes into next, negative 4x squared, negative 4x times, negative 4x times x, negative 4x squared, negative 4x times 5, plus 20x. We're going to subtract. So we're subtracting a negative. That becomes positive. Those cancel. And we're subtracting 20x. So we get 3x minus 15. x goes into 3x three times. Uh, so... 3 times x is 3x, three, 3 times negative 5 is minus 15, and we subtract, that becomes minus a negative, so this all gives you 0. Okay, so notice this 0, when we did p of 5, we got 0. And when we divided the same polynomial, this same polynomial, we divide x cubed minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 15, divided by x minus 5, we got this thing, x squared minus 4x plus 3, uh, with a remainder of 0. Okay, Turns out that this thing is going to match your remainder when you divide by x minus 5. Okay? So what we're actually going to lead to is trying to be able to factor something like this. So as you can see, if this divided by this divides evenly and you get this as your quotient, well, you can multiply both sides by x minus 5 and see this thing, x cubed minus 9x squared plus 23x minus 15 is equal to x minus 5 times the quantity x squared minus 4x plus 3. And that we can factor further. This factors into x and x minus 3 and minus 1 if they asked us to factor us. Here they just asked us to divide. So our answer when we divided was just this thing, okay? The factor theorem tells us that we can use this information. If we plug in a number into a polynomial and we get zero as our output, um, 
that means that x minus that is a factor. So p, so what we say is um, x minus a is a factor if and only if p of a is equal to zero. Okay, this shouldn't be super surprising. Think about a function like this, this polynomial. What if we wrote this polynomial as y equals, and let's write it in its factored form, x minus five, x minus three, x minus one. What would be the zeros of this function? Zeros. Well, if you set this equal to zero, what you're finding are your zeros or your y-intercepts, x minus five, x minus 3 and x minus 1. Your zeros are going to be x equals 5, x equals 3, and x equals 1. So if you were to graph this thing, first of all, you can see um, that your zeros of this function would be 5, 1, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which means your x-intercepts are these three values. Okay? So it kind of makes sense. When we find zeros, the way we find zeros by setting one of the factors equal to zero. So this isn't really just a coincidence. It makes sense. Okay? If you plug five into your function and you get zero, well, that means that's going to be a zero of your function. It also means that x minus five is going to be one of your factors. Now we could also look at this and if we plug in zero for x, we would get negative 15 for y. So that would be our y-intercept. And you can imagine the function might have to look something like, we have to pass through all these points, okay? Don't worry about a graph like this just yet. We're gonna talk about that after winter break, but it's kind of interesting to see how this all fits together. And why, if you plug in a value like five into a polynomial and you get zero, that means that x minus five is one of your factors. Okay. So if we factor this thing, okay, now what if they just asked us to factor it? They didn't give us that hint to tell us what to plug in. What do we do? It'd be nice if we knew that P of something was equal to zero, okay? but we don't know. We could start guessing. We could plug in one, plug in two, plug in three, plug in four, but we'd be plugging in all day. It'd be nice to be able to narrow that down. Okay. Well, there is something to narrow it down. If we look at this constant, the linear factors, actually the linear, the zeros must have a constant that is a factor of 15. So this actually should say the zeros um, will have a constant that is factor. Oh, okay, I see. The linear factor has a constant. So your factor is going to be like x minus something, x plus something. So your factor in the form of x minus a, the constant in that factor is going to have, uh, in that and this linear factor is going to have a factor of negative 15. So let's look at all of our factors of negative 15. Well, you've got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15. Okay? Now we, we can't see that. So those are all your factors of 15. And all of them, of course, could be positive or negative. So now we want to plug one in and hope to get zero. Um, let's plug in one. Okay, if we get zero, that means if f of zero or p of zero is one, then x minus one will be a factor. So if we get zero, let's plug in one cubed is one, minus nine times one squared, so minus nine, plus 23 times one, minus 15. Well, what do you know? We get zero. We got lucky. The first one we tested worked. Now, up to three of these could work because it's cubic, just like this one up here. Three different constants would have given a, ze a, ze a zero value for our polynomial. Okay? Would have given us zero if we plugged in. Plugged in five, we'd get zero. Plugged in three, we'd get zero. Plugged in one. Notice those are all factors of 15. Okay? We're actually doing the same problem we just did up there. Okay. So I actually just finished this problem. You'd say this is zero, but we're just going to do it from a different approach. Here. We're not going to use the five. We're going to use the one. So I wanted to give you an idea what you do if you don't know any of the factors. So let's take this thing and we're going to divide by x minus one. So x cubed minus nine 
x squared plus 23x minus 15. Divide by x minus 1. x goes into x cubed, x squared times. So multiply x cubed minus uh, x squared. Subtract, subtract. That's going to become positive. We get negative 7x squared plus 23x minus 15 x goes into negative 7x squared. I'm sorry, uh, that's not 7. That's negative 8. Negative 9 plus 1 gives you negative 8. Okay, x goes into negative 8x squared, negative 8x times. So negative 8x squared, negative 8x times x, plus negative 8x times negative 1, so plus 8x. Then we subtract, so we subtract a negative. That's positive, that goes away. Subtract this, and we get uh, 15x. Bring down the minus 15. x goes into 15x 15 times. 15 times x is 15x. 15 times negative 1 is minus 15, and we subtract that quantity. That becomes a positive. We get 0, so we get a remainder of 0. So basically what we've done, we've factored this into, we know x minus 1 works, and then we've got x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay. Then we can factor further. We've got the x minus 1. The x squared minus 8x minus 15 factors into x. Um, 3 and 5 minus 3 and minus 5. And you can see we've got the same answer. Obviously, it's the same problem. But we did it from starting with a different 0, a different factor. A different 0 here. The 0 was 1 and the factor was x minus 1. Up top, the 0 was 5 and the factor is x minus 5. Okay. Now, if you want a refresher on synthetic division, if we wanted to do this with synthetic division, we want to divide this, we would do the 1, negative 9, 23, and negative 15. Then subtract, we're dividing by x minus 1, so you put positive 1 there, bring down the 1, multiply by 1, add these together, multiply by 1, add these together, multiply by 1, and here's our remainder of 0, which means it divides even, evenly. This stands for x squared minus 8x plus 15, which is what we got over here. So if you want to use the synthetic division, that's quicker. Okay, now let's go on to the next page. We're going to try a brand new one, and this one is a little bit more complicated. Okay, um, we want to factor this thing. Now, in the previous one, all we had to do was look at this constant. But now we're also going to have to look at the lead coefficient. The reason is because in the previous problem, the lead coefficient was 1. In this problem, the lead coefficient is 3. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. Okay, So the possible values for our 0, okay, we're still trying to find p of something some value equal to zero, but that thing that we're going to use is b over a, where b is going to come from this number. Uh, b is a factor of negative two. Okay, so b over a is what we're looking for. So b comes from factors. b can be any factor of negative two. So factors of negative 2 um, could be b. b can be any factor of negative 2. a can be any factor of a can be any factor of 3 of your lead coefficient. So this number isn't always a negative 2, but it's always the constant at the end. This factors of 3, that's your lead coefficient coefficient of your highest degree term. Okay, so the factors of negative 2 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Factors of 3 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Okay, so you have to pair all of those up. So we get 1 over 1 and 2 over 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. And then we get 1 over 3 and 2 over 3, plus or minus 1 over 3 and plus or minus 2 over 3. So these are our possibilities of the things that we're going to plug in to test to see if they equal zero. Okay. And what we get here, so I'm probably not going to test these first. 
we're going to start with the one. If you plug in a one, so P of one, you plug in a one here, three times one cubed, minus two times one squared, minus seven times one, minus two. Um, basically plugging in positive one into your polynomial. Does that work? No, it doesn't. We get three minus two is one minus seven, negative six, and we get negative eight. That doesn't work. Let's try negative one of negative one. So that's going to be three times negative one cubed minus two times negative one squared minus seven times negative one minus two. That's going to be negative three minus two plus seven minus two. And I believe that does give us zero. That does give us zero. So negative one is a zero of our function, which means x plus one should be a factor. So let's divide by divide by x plus 1. So we're going to take this thing, divide by x plus 1. And when we do that, let's use synthetic division this time. So we've got the 3, the negative 2, the negative 7, and the negative 2. Divided by x plus 1, so now a negative 1 goes up there. Because that's x minus negative 1. If I bring down the 3, Right, we know that this divides evenly because this should match our remainder over here. So this better be zero. Or we did something wrong somewhere along the way. Bring down three, multiply by negative one, add these, multiply by negative one, add these, multiply by negative one, and we get zero, which is our remainder, which does match this number. So we didn't do something wrong, okay? And so factoring this thing, it's going to factor into, okay, well, in this one, our B over A was just negative 1 over 1. Negative 1 over 1. Um, negative 1 over 1. So A is 1, B is negative 1. So that's how we got 1x plus 1, okay? Then we can finish by factoring further. We divide this divided by this, so 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 7x minus 2. We're dividing by x plus 1, and what we get is 3, this represents x squared, minus 5x minus 2. Now, you know this is x squared because you always know if you have a cubic divided by a linear or a third degree divided by a first degree, x cubed divided by x should give you x squared, okay? So this thing, the 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 7x minus 2 is going to factor into this times this. So x minus 1 times 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. And that probably factors further, x minus 1. We've got a 3x and an x. I think this is easy enough to do trial and error instead of splitting the middle term. So these two numbers have to be 1 and 2. We need to get negative 5 in the middle. So if I do a 2 here, my outers give me 6x. And then a 1 here, my inners give me 1x. So minus 6x and the inners plus 1x, that should work. You can double check multiplying that out. 3x squared minus 6x plus 1x, that works, and then minus 2. Okay, so if we had to factor this thing, factor into this. Okay, the rational root theorem says ax minus b is a factor of your polynomial if and only if p of b over a is equal to zero. I will tell you, it's not even too often that you have to use this unless you're testing your fractions first. Okay, so you know how we, we were testing all of these numbers. If I started testing one third and two third, that would have come into play more. Okay, let's look at the next question and let's just start working through some of these. If you think you're good, go ahead and start working on the factoring problems. Um, if you'd like, I will go through the rest of these three problems, um, and you're welcome to watch. Stay with me. Okay. So your possible, in this one, we don't really have this.
because we don't have, we have a lead coefficient of one. So all we really need to look at is this number. So our possible zeros are factors of 24. Well, that's a lot of numbers, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, plus or minus eight, plus or minus 12, and plus or minus 24. Fortunately, you don't have to test them all, okay? You can test one, you can test negative one. Um, the first one I found that works was the third one I tried. So P of two, if you plug in two, you get two cubed, which is eight, plus five times two squared, that's five times four, so plus 20, minus two times two, minus four, and then minus 24. That gives you 28 minus 20, that gives you zero. So that means X minus two is gonna be a factor. So I'm gonna take X squared, oh, I'm sorry, that's an X cubed, X cubed, plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 24. I'm going to divide by x minus 2. Let's do synthetic division. So we've got 1, 5, negative 2, and negative 24. I'm dividing by x minus 2, so a positive 2 goes up here. Bring down the 1, multiply by 2, add these together, multiply by 2, add these together, multiply by 2, and you get 0. This is a good double check that you didn't make a mistake. This zero, plugging in P of two, should give you the same thing as the remainder when you divide your polynomial by X minus two. Okay, so we divide this, and this represents one X squared plus seven X plus 12. So equals X squared plus seven X plus 12. So now to factor this, we get, multiply this to the other side, and we'll get x minus 2 times x squared plus 7x plus 12. Of course, we can factor further. That's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 4. Okay, let's look at the next one. So our possible zeros are factors of this over factors of this. So plus or minus your factors of negative six, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six. We're dividing by the factors of this, plus or minus one and plus or minus three. So pairing there's those up, you're gonna get one over one, two over one, three over one, six over one, let's do those first. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six, and then we've got Everything over 3, 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 3 over 3, and 6 over 3. So plus or minus 1 over 3, plus or minus 2 over 3. Um, 3 over 3 is 1, we already have that covered, and 6 over 3 is 2, we already have that covered. So these are the only ones we have to test. Okay. So if you start testing, I would start with 1, then I would negative 1, and then 2. The first one I found for this one, again, two is the one that worked. So three times two cubed plus four times two squared minus 17 times two minus six, you get 24 plus eight minus 34 minus six. I'm sorry, that's not eight. That's four times four is 16. So that gives me 24 plus 16, 40 minus 34 minus 6, you get 0. Okay, so again, I'm going to divide um, 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 17x minus 6. I'm going to divide by x minus 2. Okay, let's do synthetic division. So I've got 3, 4, negative 6, 17, negative 6, 3, or negative 17, negative 6. And I'm going to divide by x minus 2, so I'll put positive 2 up there. Bring down the 3, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, this better match this. And it does. So this represents 3x squared plus 10x um, plus 3. So this factors into x minus 2. 3x squared plus 10x plus 3, and we've got x minus 2, 
3x and x. Let's see, probably a 3. We need 3 and 1. So probably 3s give us 9x, and the 1 gives us one more. So if they're both positive, that should work. Okay. And let's save the best for last. This one is a doozy. Okay, we will figure this one out. So your possible roots are zeros, which is B over A, will be your um, factors of negative 3, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3 on top, and your factors of this on the bottom, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. Oh, brother, that's a lot of fractions we're going to have to test. So we get, we'll do 1 over 1 and 3 over 1. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, um, 1 over 2 and 3 over 2. Um, 1 over 3 and 3 over 3. We don't have to do 3 over 3 because that's 1. Um, 1 over 4 and 3 over 4. Um, 1 over 6 and 3 over 6. I don't think we have to do 3 over 6 because we already have 1 half. Um, then 1 over 12 and 3 over 12. We don't have to do 3 over 12 because that's 1. So there's a lot of numbers to test. And unfortunately, I don't think any of the integers work. I went through and tested 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3. The first one I got to work was negative 1 half. So P of negative 1 half, so that's 12 times negative 1 half cubed is going to be negative 1 eighth plus 20 times negative 1 half, 1 half squared, so that's positive 1 fourth. Oh, this problem is just evil. Minus 1 half and then minus 3. Okay, so that's going to be negative 12 eighths or negative uh, 3 over 2, right? 3 fourths and 2 fourths plus 20 over 4 or 10 over 2. Oh, that's 5. Minus 1 half and then minus 3. So negative 3 halves. Minus 1 half is minus 2. Minus 2 minus 3 gives us minus 5 plus 5, so we get 0. Okay, so this is tricky. Let me just grab another sheet of paper. because there's uh, Now what we have to do, and this is where it comes into play, that your factor is AX, uh, AX minus B. Okay? So what we got here is P of negative 1 half equals 0. So negative 1 over 2 equals B over A. Okay? Um, so if you were to cross multiply, you'd get negative A equals 2B, or you would get something like, let's add this to the other side. Um, what are we trying to do here? Um, that's not what I wanted to do here. B over A. Um, oh, this is what I want to do. So scratch that. So what this really means is that X minus this thing is zero. X minus this thing, which is going to be plus one half equal to zero. Well, if you have X plus one half zero, you don't really want to factor things with fractions. So you multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So really what we're doing, we've got 2x plus, distribute that, 2 times 1 half is 1. Um, 0 times 2 is still 0. So we've got 2x plus 1 equals 0. So what we want um, is our factor is going to be in the form of 2x plus 1. Okay, so we're going to take this thing, 12x cubed plus 20x squared um, plus x minus 3, and we're going to divide by 2x plus 1, okay? 
Now you can do this with the synthetic division, but it's kind of complicated. I will show you, but let me just show you this one. I would probably just choose to use polynomial long division. Divide by 2x plus 1. 2x goes into 12x cubed, 6x squared times. This 2x times 6x squared gives you this. 6x squared times 2 is 12x cubed. 6x squared times 1 gives you plus 6x squared. Minus, minus, that goes away. You get 14x squared plus x minus 3. 2x goes into 14x squared. 7x times 14x squared, and then 7x times 1 plus 7x. Subtract, subtract, we get minus 6x minus 3. Um, 2x goes into negative 6x, negative 3 times, so negative 3 times 2x, negative 6x, negative 3 times 1, minus 3, and you get 0, because you add, you add, okay, because you're subtracting a negative. Okay, so we get this thing divided by this gives you our quotient of 6x squared plus 7x minus 3, which means this thing factors into 2x plus 1, and then 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. Okay, we can factor further um, this thing. Oh, geez. So there's a lot of factors there. There's multiple factors there, multiple factors there. This one I might use splitting the middle term. Okay, so if you take 6 and negative 3, you get negative 18. You want two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to positive 7. I would say 9 times negative 2. So split that into 9x minus 2x, bring down the minus 3 and the 6x squared. Group the first two, group the last two, pull out a 3x, you get 2x plus 3. Pull out a negative 1 and you get 2x plus 3. They both have a 2x plus 3 in them. So factor that out, and you're left with 3x minus 1. Bring down this factor, 2x plus 1. Okay, I actually think that's a little bit easier. Now, if you really want to do this with synthetic division, here's what you're going to do. Okay, you can turn off the video. Thank you for watching if you are, if you're fine with this. But if you want to see what you would need to do with synthetic division, okay, we know that p of negative one half is equal to zero. So what we would do is we would take our polynomial 12x cubed plus 20x squared plus x minus three. You'd have to divide by x plus one half. Okay. In order to do synthetic division. If you really wanted to divide by but we really want to divide by 2x minus 2x plus 1, right? But what you'd have to do is you'd have to break this apart. You'd have to call that 2. The problem is synthetic division you can't do when there's a coefficient of the x. It's got to be in the form of x minus a or x minus something. So you could factor it up a 2 from both terms, and you'd be left with x plus 1 half. You could do that, 12x cubed plus 20x squared plus x minus 3. And the first thing you would do is you'd first divide by this. So when you divide this by this, ignore the 2 for a second. You're first just going to divide by this. And at the end, you'd have to divide by 2. Okay, so if you're dividing by just this, you put a negative 1 half up here. You'd have the 12, the 20, the 1, and the negative 3. Bring down the 2, multiply by negative 1 half, you get negative 1. Um, add these, you get 19. Is that right? 19 times negative 1 half uh, gives you negative 19 halves. Something doesn't seem right. Plus 1, 17 halves. So you get negative 17 halves multiply yeah that's not right what did we do wrong okay. let's try this again we're dividing by oh 
dividing by x plus 1 half, so that goes up there, our polynomial is 12, 20, 1, and negative 3, 12, 20, 1, and negative 3. Okay, we bring down the 12, multiply by negative 1 half. Oh, what did I do wrong? I thought that was a 2. I didn't see the 12. Okay, 12 times negative 1 half gives you negative 6. Add these 14, multiply by negative 1 half, you get negative 7. Add these, you get negative 6, multiply by negative half, you get 3, and you get 0. So this is the nice check. You know that this equals 0, you know this has to match. So if you make a mistake, um, if you make a mistake, then you know to redo it, okay? So, so far we didn't divide by this entire thing. We only divided by this part, and what we got was 12x squared plus 14x minus 6. So now we have to divide by the 2. So now divide by 2, and you get 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. So as you can see, that was a little bit more complicated, but you do get the same answer as we got over here with the polynomial long division. So those will be equal. Then at that point, you would get to this times this, and then you'd factor that further to get this answer. All right? Thank you all for watching. I know that was kind of long. Uh, and we will see you all later on this week.